What's up guys, it's the Scripting Legend here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own weather website using Python, Flask, and HTML. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install Python if you haven't already. Inside of Visual Studio Code, if you want to use that editor, you'll need the Python extension from the Extensions tab to use Python inside of Visual Studio Code. The next thing you're going to need to do is make a folder inside of the folder that you will keep all our code for this video and call it templates. <coughs> so it needs to be called templates because that's how we're going to render our templates. <coughs> then outside of that folder, not inside of our templates folder, we'll create a main.py file. Next thing we're going to need to do is open it up a terminal and run the command pip install flask or if you're on mac then you'll need to run pip3 install flask um, and after you have ran pip or pip3 install flask you're going to need to do either pip or pip3 install requests um, unless requests already comes built into python I don't remember honestly, but if it doesn't, then you'll need to run either pip or pip3 install requests. So then open up your main.py file and start importing our things. So we're going to need import requests. Um, we can import time, but we're not going to use it, I realize, later on. But then we're going to need to do from Flask, and we're going to import a whole bunch of things from Flask. Starting with Flask as a capital, also render template. Um, we don't actually use URL4 or redirect since it's just like a one web page um, application, but we do use request. So all you really need from Flask is Flask, um, render template, and request. Then we're going to make a variable called app and make it equal to Flask um, with the capital F, and then brackets underscore underscore name underscore underscore then we'll do if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals to speech marks underscore underscore main underscore underscore and then what we're going to do is app dot run and we'll just put debug to true so that just is going to run our app now this is going to be on a local host if you have a host feel free to use it so now we're going to make our get weather function. So we'll do def get weather. And inside of that, we'll make our city variable equal to request.form.get. And we're going to get city name, which is going to be the name of an input field in our HTML when we create that. Then we're going to need a variable called API because we're going to be using a weather API to get the data and that's going to be equal to um, a URL. You've copied that in. What you're going to need to do is make a um, another variable called data and that's going to be equal to so data equal to requests with an s dot um, get and we're going to get the API and we're going to return it in a JSON format. So the next thing we're going to do is get our data from the... So make sure that you do um, requests with an S and not request because request is from Flask and we use that to get things from our HTML. So then we're going to make a weather variable called I mean, not call. We're going to make it equal to an F string and it'll be weather conditions. And um, we'll get our weather, or we'll use our data variable and get the weather, the index zero, and main. So that will return to us our weather condition. So the next thing we're going to do is make a temperature variable. So we'll do temp is equal to an f string. Temperature colon. Then we'll do int. We don't actually need the int, I don't think so. So um, feel free to not have that. 
If it doesn't work, then just make it wrap it in int. So we'll do main and temp, and we'll do minus 2000, I mean not 2000, 227.18. Um, oh, so yeah, we actually do need the int. The, I just remember the reason why we put it in an int is so that we don't get decimal values. Then we'll make a min temp variable. And it's basically going to be the same thing as our temperature, so we'll just copy that and paste that. But we'll replace temperature right here to low, and then we'll replace temp to temp underscore min. And we'll subtract it by 233.18. We'll copy that variable, and we'll paste it in underneath. Change min to max. Um, and change temp underscore min to temp underscore max. And also make sure you change low colon to high colon and subtract by 216.18. Now, as you can see, I forgot to um, change the low colon, so it would still say low colon, but I realized that later. So we're gonna make a pressure variable now, and this will be an F string pressure colon and now we're going to get the dead variable and we'll get the um, main from it and the temp I mean pressure so then what we're gonna do is copy that variable and we'll paste it in another two times and we'll change the first one from pressure to humidity and we'll change pressure to humidity and then the um, the next variable we're going to change to also in our humidity we have to subtract by 9. So our next variable we're going to change to wind and we'll get the wind speed and this is actually a little different. So make sure we change our, our um, pressure colon to wind speed colon and our pressure colon to humidity colon and our humidity variable since we forgot to do that. And then um, you'll see to get the wind speed, it's a little different. Instead of getting main, we have to get wind and speed from wind. So I'm um, pretty sure that there's also like a direction, but we're not using that in this um, in this particular video. So we'll just add MPH after the wind. So that's like the wind speed miles per hour. Also, we'll add a percent behind humidity because that's what weather apps usually do. And then we'll make a variable called final data, and that will just be an array of all our variables because we will use that. Um, we're going to return that in just a second. We'll return the final data array so that when we can make a variable in our um, when we render the website. So here we are. We'll do return final data. So now if we get out of that function finally and we make a um, root for our app. So if you never use Flask, don't worry about this too much. We're basically just going to create like an access URL. So we'll do at app.root um, and we'll just do a slash for the first one and we'll have methods equal to post and get in an array. Um, and actually, I put app.root, what am I doing? It's supposed to be um, at app.root, so let me fix that. Alright, so now we'll add another root, and this will be the same thing but slash home. So if you're new to Flask programming with Python, like I said, it's basically just adding a URL. But if you put slash for the URL, it'll, you can access it using slash or, use, or not using slash. And you can also make as many URLs as you want. So we can access this particular web page using slash, no slash, or slash home. So now we're going to make a function called home so that we will render our page. Inside of it, we'll check if the method the request.method is equal to post. And if it is, what we're going to do is we'll make a um, variable called data, and that will be equal to get weather. We're going to call that function. 
So basically that's equal to the final data array since that's what we returned in our get weather variable. Now we'll make a city name equal to request.form.get, not frumpt.get. And we're going to get city name. We already did this before in our get weather function, but we need it again for our web page. Now we're going to return a, and we're going to render our template. And basically we'll render index.html, which we'll create in just a second. And we'll pass a variable of city name. And that will be equal to our city name variable that we just created. And we'll pass a variable called data, and that will be equal to um, our data variable that we just created. And now, if it's not equal to post the method, then we'll just return a render template index.html. So without like the city name and without all the data for that city. All right. So now in our templates folder, we'll create a nice new HTML file called index.html. And inside of it, if you're in Visual Studio Code, you can type a exclamation point. And then if you click Shift Tab, as you can see in just a second, it creates a nice little HTML basic format. So we're going to rename the title to like something like Weather App, and then like that straight slash, and then we'll do Home. Not really sure what you call that straight slash. so. I'll call it a straight slash. Now inside of our body, since we'll add styles later, we're just going to make in h1 firstly, and this will just say like, um, we'll align its center first of all. So we'll do align equals to center. And then we'll make it say like weather app. So that's just like our title. Um, we'll make a form, and the action will just be equal to blank. And then we'll do our method equal to post. So this is just how we like communicate with the server from the front end in HTML and Flask. So we'll make an input type equal to search just so that we have that like X to clear search next to it. We'll give it a name of city name. So this is how we actually access the value of the um, of this search field, which we did already in our main.py. And then we'll give it a placeholder of enter city name. So let's just close this correctly. And we'll make a button with a type equal to submit. So like we'll submit the form. And that's when the request will be sent. We'll just make it say something like go. I think that's good enough. And outside of the form, we're going to add another h1. We'll add it in the line center. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to make it say the city name. So if you never use Flask, you'll never have experience using Jinja. Jinja is a templating syntax, which you can use when in a web page rendered by Flask. So basically, what you can do is you can put two curly braces, and then inside of it, the variable name, which you have supplied in your main.py. So we called it city name. So as you can see right here, it's just getting that variable, which we said equal to the city name variable we created in that main.py. So it'll get that value and put it there. We'll make a paragraph tag and align it to the center as well. And inside of it, um, we can put curly braces, percent for, we'll call it something, hmm, what should we call it? We'll call it something like, um, how about something like Elm? I think that's good, yeah. And we'll do for Elm in data percent. And then we'll do out underneath, we'll do percent and four percent. So if you've never used Flask, then you'll have never used this as well. So this is also part of Jinja. Basically, if we do curly brackets percent, um, then basically we can write some Python code inside of that. Um, we can't do everything, but we can, however, use a for loop. So for every element in the data, we're going to want to put our two curly braces and get the um, text of the element. So just like that. And then what we're going to want to do is add a line break tag. So that'll go to the next line. 
So now if we go to our main.py again, after we save our index.html, click on the run button, we will be able to um, go to our, we'll open up Google Chrome and we'll go to our local host. So mine is running on 127.0.0.1 colon 5000, which is the standard. And you can see it says weather app and we can enter a city name right there. So we, if we do something like France, then um, we get the conditions, our clouds, and we get all the stuff that we wanted. So that's great. And if we enter a different city or a different place, we'll do London. Actually, you know what? Let's do Paris. Okay, and you can see everything changed and it is clear in Paris. Alright, so I actually forgot to change this from low to, so let's change it to high. And now if we refresh, you'll see it says high. And we can see the condition, current temperature, stuff like that. So now we'll add some styles. So instead of making a new style sheet, we'll just use style tags inside of our head tags. And we're going to want to add like a gradient background color. So we'll do like body and we'll do background, background, if I can spell, background. And that will be equal to a linear gradient of 140 degrees. We'll do light blue. Um, and we'll put two blue, and I actually put um, two commas by accident, so it's backspace one. So now if we do height, colon, oops, I forgot my colon, but we're going to make it equal to 100 view height. Um, we'll do width, colon, 100 view width, and we'll do um, background background um, repeat colon no repeat and we'll do the text I mean the color to white and now what we're going to do is text shadow and we're basically going to make outline so we'll do um, negative one pixels one pixel and then two pixels and then um, we'll do We'll do black and then what we're going to do is one pixel, one pixel, two pixels. We'll do black. We'll do, um, let's see, one pixel, negative one pixel, zero black. And um, we actually have to add a comma after every time we write, rewrote the word black. Um, and then we'll do negative one pixel, ne um, negative one pixel, and zero, black. So now let's just format this nicer. Let's tab in a few times. And that looks a lot better. So this will actually like give us like a outline around our text. So now what we're gonna do is text align, not E not text equals align, text dash align center. So now outside of our body tab, we're going to put our form and we're going to do justify content center. And then we'll style our inputs. So what I want to do for our input is make a, um, we'll do the width. We'll set the width to like 20 view width. We'll set the height to how about seven view height, and we'll set the um, font weight to bolder. So that's basically it's bolder than bold. If you didn't know what bolder was, it's bolder than bold. And then we'll do the same thing for a button, pretty much. So we'll do the width to five view width instead, and we'll do the height to seven view height as well. And the font weight, but once again, will be bolder, which is once again bolder than bold. So then we'll, the last thing we're going to do is our paragraph tag. And that's really all we're going to do is font size to larger, which is larger than large. And then we'll do font weight bolder, which is once again bolder than bold. 
Alright, so um, that should be good if we refresh our page here. Then it looks a lot nicer. Now we can scroll down a little, which I don't really like. So um, let's go over to our HTML and change the height to like 97 view height. I think that should be okay. Um, didn't look. Alright, so we still need to go a little, so 96 view height will do. Alright, that's good. Whoops, didn't mean to undo. Alright, so, um, it's good enough. So, if we search our city, like Rome or something, we get our conditions, and our wind speed, our humidity, pressure, and the min, max temperature. So, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed and this helped you out, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. The majority of you guys who watch my videos are not subscribed, so please do that. It will really help me out, and I'll really appreciate it. See you in the next video, guys. Comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like. If you'd like the voiceover, if you like me commentating while recording. So, other than that, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.